All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is July 1st, 2022, Canada Day today in beautiful Canada. Of course, happy Canada Day to all of our brothers and sisters out there. Well, guys, I'm about to share something with you guys here today that um, <laughs> I I believe with all my heart uh, we've been given the final piece and uh, it was even confirmed. So I'm going to start before going into all of that. I want to first remind you guys, show you guys the the reminders of these key things that we know of this season and time that we're in. That there's simply no denying the revelations that we've received here in this ministry. And some of these key things that were so important, like the 70th year and the who the Gospels are speaking to and, and the 14 years and all of this that, that has been revealed, the Taurus and the importance of Taurus, all of these things that the Lord has revealed. I've received, as you guys know, one known confirmation from the Holy Ghost through our sister Jodell, and I even spoke about it in the last video again, because Taurus is a vital key to this ministry. It was the one conf confirmation that we received in, in, the, in the meaning of Taurus and the ox and, and the head of the bull and that Christ is the beginning and the Lord counts from the beginning and, and all of it that was connected to it as well as the revelation of 50 days, then the 14 years, and then the 50th Jubilee. Now, since that revelation came about, we were, we've been trying to understand where it all fit because we needed to first understand where the 14 years was going to begin. But we first had to understand before that, what year? Or you don't even have to say before that, but, but along the way, we also had to understand what year was the 70th. And now we know the 70th. We, we understand where the tribulation is going to begin, where day one of the 14 years will start. So one of these biggest issues that we just recently had has been the Lord God is counting from Taurus. And if the Lord God is counting from Taurus, what the heck has happened? How did we miss Taurus? If you recall in this last video, this was a very big deal video. But there was one big problem with the video as well. You see, things that were big in it were, were this connection that the bright and morning star of Revelation 22 was connected to Luke 24 and to John chapter 8 exactly as it should from all of the revelations have told us that when the Son of Man comes, that is when he's going to start his 40 days. It was perfect. Well, guess what? That hasn't changed. But you know what has changed? You know what really important piece in this last video that changed? We were wrong about the bright and morning star. I was wrong about the bright and morning star being Venus. Brothers and sisters, what I'm about to show you as we go further on in today's video is the answer that we have been seeking and searching for. We have been seeking and searching the understanding of the four, of the 70th year. We have been seeking and understanding, you know, and where the where the 14 years, where the beginning of tribulation is going to be. We have been seeking and searching how is the Lord going to play out this 50 day period of time. How is it all going to be connected to Taurus? Well, the first two we got, don't we? We know it's the 70th year. We know where the 14 years will begin. And this is 100% the year. It was this 50 day count. And this frustration that had been mounting, Lord, with, 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 with Taurus. Taurus is the beginning. We're going to show it to you in a bunch of examples later on. That to the Lord God, the beginning of the year is Taurus. Everything beginning is Taurus to the Father. Everything. It's going to blow you away. You've seen so many of these things before, but you've maybe not seen them all lined up together. And when you do, you're going to start to realize there's no question 
that the Lord begins from Taurus. But guess what? We've been looking at it from, from the perspective of Nisan and then Taurus being the third month. Well, I mentioned in the last video that if that connections, those connections that we were looking at in the last video because of Venus, if those come and go, I said there's one more count to go. There's a 50-day connection still to go. My problem was, why, why couldn't I believe it? Why couldn't I say, yes, this is definitely it before? Because I could not wrap my mind around how those final 50 days before the 14 years begin, how on earth can they be connected to Pentecost? We're going to talk about this more as we get going. And it, it goes all the way back to a conversation I've told you guys about a couple times with Ivan and I about a year and a half, almost two years ago, when this revelation came about with Taurus that was confirmed by the Holy Spirit, that when that happened, we started to say, well, what if the calendar is actually two months off? Because that is where the Lord God counts from. That's, that's where the beginning of the flesh was. And we've talked about this before. So it's not something new in, in that we haven't had it dropped in our spirits before. But it just couldn't make sense. The, the lining up wasn't there. Because if God is counting from Taurus as the beginning of the year, we know that the house of Israel or, or Judah, the house of Judah, doesn't. Right? We know Nisan is the beginning of the year. But what's happened is we know that they've taken those names from, what is it, ba ancient Babylon, right? And they gave them all these names instead of just the numbers. That was the beginning of the downfall. That was the beginning of the slide from understanding God's true timing. But as we get further, further into this, the biggest piece, one of the biggest pieces was the sun, the S-U-N, and who the S-U-N represents. And no, it's not Christ. We know that they that they they it was twisted because we know from Malachi 4 that that the S-U-N can be a typology of the S-O-N, but the S-U-N is absolutely not the S-O-N. And you're gonna see that today by seeing and understanding that, as we know, it has gone off its course. If it hasn't kept its course, is it a good guy or is it a bad guy? Hello. Okay. You're going to see, we're going to get into all of these pieces today. And <laughs> you're going to see something that had me in tears this afternoon talking to my wife. Um, <laughs> I'm holding them back right now, just thinking about it. I could just imagine when I get to it. Ah. <laughs> nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I when when I started to understand this yesterday, it, it was because of two posts. There was a post by our sister Trisha and uh, one of her brothers, Charlie, that made uh, some comments in it as well about the sun. And I was in agreement with them. And and I had made the comment that I was going to go look at this at this debate and look into it further. And it was the debate of Venus or another star in particular that was the true star called the bright and morning star, not Venus. And I had done a video two and a half, maybe three years ago, somewhere around there, that showed that the planets couldn't represent Christ and, and the Holy Spirit. Yet I went and did this video forgetting about that previous one years ago because because in the in the Strong's Concordance, the one time it's used, it says it's Venus. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, they did make a mistake. Because the bright and morning star absolutely 100% is not Venus. And when you see what it is, which most of you might already be saying, I already know what it is. Of course I know. If it's not Venus, then it's going to be this. Oh, really? 
you, you, you're probably right if you're guessing what it is or if you know what it is. But what I'm about to show you is when it is where. And when you see that, when I saw that yesterday, because, because of this post that Trisha had done and had, had made a comment about these things, and, and Charlie had said something, and we had gone in, and I was, I was posting things about it. Well, it started, it was either the night before or the morning, earlier yesterday morning, that there was a post also from our brother Ed that um, some of the brothers over on Interrupts 165, like Ed and Yanni and all these guys, they're here as well. And, and, and a group of them over there were talking about what if we didn't look at the Hebrew calendar and count it as, you know, Nisan and Ayar and Savan and all those things, but just said, okay, we know Taurus is the beginning and we go Taurus month one, month two, and, and we just look at it like that. Well, that was part, that was, that was why I said in this last video before that post was done is I knew that that was still a possibility. But I still could not wrap my head around how that is the bright and morning star and, and, and Taurus being the beginning, according to the Lord God, could line up with the Hebrew calendar as we know it must also do. Because they're in the land, they've been there for this long, this is the running, this is how it counts, this is clearly where the sun is now. However, is God going to change because the sun has changed? The S-U-N has changed? No. God always runs off the stars. God's, God's timepiece is the stars. But the sun has gone off his course. It's so awesome. It is so perfect. And when you see, when you hear the story, when I get to it, of what I had prayed last night because I suddenly realized that I believed I had finally got the last puzzle piece all yesterday afternoon and into the evening. I was weighted. Man, I was I was panicky. I, it suddenly started to dawn on me, the weight, because I believed I had, I had, I had got it. I had received it. And, and it really started weighing more and more and more on me. And, and I just, I wasn't feeling good last night. Just feeling like that that anxiety in your spirit, you know, and in your heart and your your stomach tenses up and knots up. That's what I was feeling like yesterday when I understood this. And I prayed to the Lord a prayer that I'm going to tell you guys about later that was like the one I did when the Lord confirmed through the Holy Spirit about the 50, 14, 50 being correct. And uh, what I said was I wanted the answer. I wanted the confirmation last night or today before doing the video. Because I wasn't going to continue doing this. Now, not I wasn't going to continue teaching. But if I hadn't finally understood this, I was saying, you're, 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 Lord, it, you're, it's bananas to think that I'm going to keep showing dates that I believe truly in understanding this is it. I'm not going to keep doing it. I'll keep teaching the revelation. But 70 is going to get thrown aside like everybody else. The understanding of when and trying to discern that, I'm throwing it aside. Because I, I don't want that. This isn't why I, I started understanding the revelation to bring everything forward. Just to say, oh, I believe it's here. And here's the revelation. And here's the understanding. But only for it to fall flat all the time. There is one more shot at this. And then I'm done with that. I'm only going to teach the revelation of these end time understandings. And I'm not going to be talking timing anymore. So if I don't get this, that's it. If this really isn't it and I'm feeling it. If I don't have this confirmation by tomorrow, then I'm not doing it. Well, lo and behold, our beautiful sister Trisha gave the confirmation. And when we get to it, you're going to say, oh my goodness. Because I had prayed for that confirmation. And the confirmation was in the same type of as you're going to see in a little bit, that I got from Jodell. Not the same way that Jodell that it happened to, but in how it was presented was the exact same. And I knew this happened this afternoon and I, I started crying as, as I'm telling you, I'm trying to, I keep trying to hold it back when I think about it, but I just, I was reading it 
And as I read it, I knew, and I started crying and my wife's looking at me. She's like, what? And I'm like, I can't tell you right now. I, uh, I said, all the weight just hit me. All the weight just hit me because, because you realize that it's not, I, I think, I believe I'm understanding anymore. I have this sense that now I know. And so the 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 feeling, ah, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> the 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 weight and the sudden realization of, oh my goodness, this is real, hit me. Not real in in just the leaving and and going as the bride. Not just the real as as being workers here on the earth for the Lord, but the real of everything that comes next for those that remain. And I just, it just hit me. I broke down. And uh, at the same time, it was exciting. Because as this video title says, uh, as you guys would know what it is now, it was what I was given through Trisha. So <laughs> we're going to get to that. I want you guys to also know that that Bright and Morning Star video essentially what happens is you're going to replace Venus with what you're going to see in a little bit. And when you see the date, you're going to know yourselves that it's real, that we are here. It's going to blow you away. So let's get into this. Okay. This is that video that I was talking about, right? And this was that video in March, uh, March 10th, 2020, I did this video. I spoke about it in the last one, right? So we're not going to go crazy on it. But this was that video. And this video said that it was after the 50th, the tribulation begins. Oh, I didn't want to hit on it. After the 50th, where did it go? Right here. After the 50th. Tribulation begins this year. You guys know I was going to take that video down. And I had the same kind of intense conversation with the Lord after this video as I did last night when I realized that I didn't think I was understanding, but I suddenly knew that I had understood it. And then I get the same kind of confirmation that Jodell gave. I got the same type of confirmation this time from Trisha. And the intensity of the prayer, I don't know how to explain it, except, you know, sometimes you guys probably know, right? You, you pray for things, you seek the Lord and prayer for things, but you don't get, you know, you, you kind of feel like, well, I hope so. You know, it's that type of thing. Maybe some of you are more intense regularly, but for me, I never wanted to feel like I'm forcing it. I'm not, I'm not, Lord, do this or else, you know? It was never anything like that. But this one was the same as this one. And the way I received the response was the same as it was this one. So for me, it's going to, it looks, for some people, it's going to look like a simple confirmation. For me, it meant everything. Because I understand after four and a half years plus of doing this, how the Lord reveals things through me in his word. And how important serious confirmations are revealed to me. And when they're the same, of course, I'm going to pay attention. So anybody that's new to the ministry, come to this playlist right here and click on this one right here. When you click on it, you're going to see these intro videos right here. When you're saying to yourself, well, what's he talking about? Who the Gospels are speaking to or the 14 years? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. What's he talking about? These are the intro series right here. Number one and number two. If you take 30 minutes of your life to do a Bible study, do this one. Spend 30 minutes on this one, and you're going to understand why there are differences in the Gospels, and it's all because of who they're speaking to. When you begin to understand that, you're going to realize that if... Matthew is speaking to the Jews. Mark is speaking to, to the house of Israel, the world, the sleeping church, and so forth. That's not ready. And that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. 
you're going to say, oh my goodness. That would seem to make sense that there's more than one set of seven years. And you're going to realize, yep, it's actually 14 years. Okay? You're going to understand that more clearly when you watch this second video. And then I highly recommend this third video. It's a long one, but it will tie it all together because you're going to realize that the reason this was never understood before, outside of it being the Lord's will for this time, is because we have all been taught all of our lives for hundreds of years from the Gospel of Matthew. We, we In being taught from the Gospel of Matthew all our lives, everything has a perspective from the Jews. Everything has a perspective of Matthew who is written to the Jews. And so everybody thinks the tribulation is only seven years. Everybody thinks it's pre before the seven years of the, for the Jews. Um, you know, they, they go to Matthew 24 all the time as if Mark and Luke don't exist because they never understood who they were talking to. This third video is going to blow your mind and put these first two together in an understanding as to why this couldn't have been understood before, why it wasn't understood before. You're going to understand pre, mid, and post. How come there's scripture that defines all of them? Because they are all true. So you can come in here and watch the rest of these videos. It is awesome, and I promise you, it'll be worth every single moment of your time when you watch them. You're going to learn a ton, and it's going to be so exciting. All right? Now, when you hear me talking about the form, you know, where uh, Yanni and Ed had posted and Trisha and Charlie, and there's just literally just a couple under a 1,000 people. There were right around a 1,000 people in the forum now sharing scripture and studies and prayer requests and 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 uh, uh, news and events going on around the world, all sorts of things to help you keep up to date. But better than all of that, it's with a group of like-minded brothers and sisters watching and praying and seeking and lifting each other up all in the name of the Lord. All right? So feel free to come and join us. If you want to, you just come to right here to the website, ministryrevealed.com. Go to the forum in the description, uh, in the menu, and sign up. It'll take you a couple seconds, and it's free. All right? So now, let's get into this. I wanted to start with you guys, just a reminder. I know you guys know the 14 years, but I'm using it to, to give comfort in reminding, but I'm also using it to build, to show what and where this 50 is connected that we're looking for. Because I want you guys to understand something that when this video was put out on March 10th, 2020, the, the, the video was that the 50 that comes before the 14 years, right? Because the end time code is 50 days, 14 years, 50th Jubilee. That is the story that is the absolute revelation of the end of days. Somebody doesn't want to believe it? Fine. That's up to you. If you come and seek these scriptures and you start or these videos and these teachings and you seek and search them out, I promise you, you're going to understand it. This was the one confirmation until today that I knew was from the Holy Spirit. And the same type, as you know, as I just said, was given today. Well, this 50 was all about Pentecost. When I, when I put this together, as you guys know, I spoke about it in the previous video, that what had happened in Numbers 13 was the revelation that Osi, whose name is Hosea, who is the deliverer like Jesus, Yeshua, whose father is Noon. All right? His father is Noon. Okay? Osi, the son of Noon. And noon, it turned out, if you go to the Hebrew alphabet, noon is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet equals their, their counting numbers is the number 50. And it was the revelation that 50, 14. And for those in the ministry, you'll know what I'm talking about because the revelation here in this ministry is the revelation of the 14 years of the end of days, seven of seals, seven of trumpets, seven for the church, for the world, for the sleeping church, and seven for Judah. 
And what is the final year? It's the 50th year Jubilee. It's the final two sevens and then the Jubilee of the seven, seven, seven years. So it was the final two sevens and the Jubilee. And noon represented 14 and it was the number 50. And so when that had been discovered and as I was putting that out and I was panicking because then I said, Lord, I just told everybody that after the 50, the 14 years begin. And the Lord confirms it to me so that I don't take down the video. Yet it didn't happen back then. It's been over two years and it still never happened. But the Lord confirmed that that video was correct. That I had understood. And that it was 50 days and then the 14 years of tribulation beginning. And that 50 days in its connection was the 50 days of Pentecost. You see, back then, we didn't know officially where these 14 years were definitely going to begin. And so we knew that there was a 50, a 14, and a 50. It was a day count, 14 years, two sets of seven, and then the 50th Jubilee. So the connection to it, the connection to it was all about the 50 of Pentecost. <laughs> I think that was a text from our brother Mark. Everybody's waiting and praying. Thank you, brother. Well, what had happened was we we knew it and we knew it and we knew it. we kept going. And, and then the things we thought it was there, we thought it was there and we thought it was there. And it wasn't until about the last 10 months and especially the last six months this revelation, this understanding of Taurus. And we kept digging into Taurus because, you know, this connection also with the 14 years. We, we came to realize that definitely Taurus is what we were looking for. That is what the Lord confirmed in that video as well. And then we saw in the last two years the differences between how the house of Israel counted and how the house of Judah counted. Then we were looking to understand, well, Okay, we're not looking for the house of Israel now. We're looking for the house of Judah because it is the Jews in the land. And we realized it was Tishri. Once we had Tishri, we were like, Lord, we needed to understand the, the 70th year. Because it was once we knew the 70 years came to an end that the 14 years would begin. So we had to understand that. We got, of course, Leviticus chapter 19. You see, we knew in this ministry from very, very early on, like, you know, I think it was October or so, I think it was October of 2017, the, the revelations began with the, with the um, Gospels in September of 2017, and I believe somewhere around late uh, October 2017, this was the very first thing that made me say, oh my goodness, it's 14 years. Because... One was like a rapture. The next one was the rapture. And the third one was the Lord coming. That was the typology here of what Paul was saying. And you realized because then you understood that pre, mid, and post were all true. And I said, oh my goodness. When you understand who the gospels are speaking to, we understood that then it was 14 years. Okay? That there was 14 years. The first one was in Christ. And it was what? Above 14 years ago. This is this is this is a piece of scripture that always just was like a thorn in my side because I always just thought, why, Paul, couldn't you just have told us what that was above 14 years? Do you know how much easier our life, my 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 stress, my my seeking and searching of this would have been so much easier if Paul just said how many days, how much above 14 years? Oh, man, would life have been so much easier? <laughs> I think they're laughing up there sometimes. They're laughing in a fun way up in heaven, right? Don't worry, dude. Don't worry. You're going to get it, guys. Just keep going. Just keep going, right? And that's what happened. It was always this above portion that we'd been seeking. Well, as I said, we knew. I knew there was the 50 days above it. But there was an issue recently, wasn't there? Because if the Lord God was counting from Taurus, how can you get 50 for Pentecost? Yet still be at the Feast of Trumpets at Tishri 1 for the beginning of the 14 years. It made no sense. Okay? 
It made no sense. So now it made no sense, but it was still always in the back of my mind. It was always in the back of my mind that maybe it really was two months off. But but how can I account for that with the 50? And it wasn't, like I said, until late the night before or yesterday at morning that it all started to reveal itself and its connection was perfect, okay? But we know here in this ministry, guys, we know it's 14 years. You know, Psalms 90 and 10 confirms to us that it's 14 years and that it's when 70 years are done. You see, the days of our years are 70, or sorry, three score and 10 years, which is 70. And if by reason of strength, they're 80 years, yet is their strength, labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. If, if you're saying from 70 to 80, do you say that's 11 years? No, it's 10 years. You don't count 70. It's telling you when 70 is done. And let me help people understand that in this uh, one piece here, okay? This is the chart, Israel is the timepiece. And it's all that, it's what we had learned from Leviticus chapter 19. Last year, we believed, I believed that it was the three years from Leviticus 19, 23, and then the relation to the fourth year of us going to the Lord. But it couldn't have been because these are the years that come first. We were looking for the 70th year. And what you found out was the first three years when they're in the land, it's uncircumcised. They can't take from it. The fourth year, they give it to the Lord and they can't have of it. It's not until the fifth year that it's theirs going forward. Which means right now, 2021, from the fall of 2021 to the fall of 2022, right? From Tishri to Tishri. It's the 70th year to the house of Judah. And it's also the Shemitah year of the seventh. So we know that there's a new Shemitah cycle that starts this year at Tishri 1, right on time for the beginning of the 14 years. Just like we saw when they came into the land, they said there were four years left on a Shemitah cycle, which was absolutely the understanding from Leviticus chapter 19. So here's how it works. Psalms 90 and 10 says from 70 to 80 years. Well, you don't count 70. So it's when 70 is complete. So this would be 70 on this side. Okay. And then these are the day one, 12 months, and then you're 71. So it's like being zero and you're one day. So from one day to 365 days, bang, you turn one. But all of this in between from zero was the beginning of one. It's like from zero saying one. By the time you finish saying the word one, you've completed one, okay? You're not one when you're on this side anymore. You've completed one. You're, when you're, as soon as you're on this side of one, you're in your second year. And when you understand that, you can see that 70 to 80 means when 70 is reached, then it's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eighty years. You see, it's not the other side of eighty. It's as soon as eighty years is complete. That is your ten years. And that's why everywhere says seventy years. Daniel, Zechariah, Psalms 90 and 10. So what do you get? Eighty years. Then it says, for it is soon cut off, which equals a short period of time, which is about six months. So you would go from the fall or Tishri of 2022 to the fall of Tishri or 2033, 2030, sorry, 2032. And for the next six months from fall of 32 to the spring of 33. That's your 10 and a half years, seven of seals, three and a half years of trumpets. And then what? Then there's a cutting off and a flying away that takes place. What is this cut off and flying away? This is Revelation 12, 14. Revelation 12, 14 is the final three and a half years. Time and times and half a time. So from 80 and a half, spring of 33, you have six months, one year, 
two and a half years. This is when Satan Satan is defeated when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And then you got the Matthew 24 days of Noah, the final year when he defeats Satan and restores everything in that final 14th year. And when the three and a half years are over, those who were flown away into the wilderness at mid trumpets from Judah, they will return and it will be the final Jubilee when everything will be restored to them as Ezekiel 30, uh, 47 and 48. Okay? It's, it's crystal, crystal clear when it comes to this understanding of the 70 to 80 soon cut off and then three and a half years of we fly away. This has absolutely nothing to do with us. This is about mid-trumpets for Judah. The Lord will have been here the first three and a half the city and the streets being rebuilt, okay, in Jerusalem for the first half of trumpets. Then Satan is cast down, and this is Revelation 12, 14, all right? So we've understood these things, and we've known them, and we've understood them for a long time. It was always about where does 70 truly end? That's why That's why all the pastors, all the teachers, preachers, everybody stopped talking about 70, after 2018 because all of them that talk prophecy suddenly kept talking prophecy without understanding 70 without mentioning it ever again okay we didn't do that we knew we absolutely 100% knew that the end of 70 years was the beginning of the tribulation we knew it it was a fact revealed to us from scripture so we kept seeking and we kept searching and we were rewarded with the revelation of what you just saw of Leviticus chapter 19, Luke chapter 13, that got us to Leviticus through a brother. And by seeing that Israel, when they came into the land in 1948, had four years left on their Shemitah cycle, which was absolutely perfect. That meant this was the 70th year. And it's coming to an end. Well, then what happened? If if we knew the 14 years, right? We we understood the 14 years. We we understood that that um uh, uh, uh that it was now from Tishri. So the 70, the Tishri. Well, we were still trying to understand this this piece above. What was this above piece? And what we had recently been talking about for the last while, <laughs> because we knew the importance of Savan, because Savan represents Taurus, and this is what the Lord kept telling us was the beginning. It's the beginning, it's the beginning, it's the beginning, it's the beginning. Well, when, when I took this as in the beginning, was that, he was telling us, this is the beginning of everything. This is where we're going to vanish. This is the like the pre-trib escape. This was all of it. What I had missed was what it meant in the fact that it was the beginning. Now, as I said earlier, did I already understand that it could be that it meant everything was two months off? Sure. But you can't account for the sun. What are you going to do accounting for the sun? Clearly, the spring is back in Nissan. Right? <clears throat> it starts back here. So we know it's because of the sun. And we know the sun has sped up over the last several thousand years by two months. So what had happened in, in trying to understand, you know, <clears throat> where is this, where is this, this above portion with the Lord, right? Where's this above that we needed to understand? Well, let's go over here. We've talked about this several times, that when you go into the Gospel of John, we know now, we've revealed it so often, that when Christ came, after his death and resurrection, the stories of the, of the resurrection in all four Gospels are different, as we now know, for a reason. We've got videos explaining it all. And the one from Luke, I mean, from John, is when the 50 days begin. So we know from his resurrection, he meets with them. He's gone. He returns on the 
day, right? He returns again after eight days. Then we go to Luke chapter 24. And when he gets to Luke 24, we know it's still the eighth day. And what does he do? He comes and as he's walking down the road, he meets the two on the road to Emmaus. And we saw that the body was not found. What is this beginning of? The 40 days of the Son of Man. So you have from day one of the 50 in John till the eighth day, he meets with the apostles one more time. And then on that eighth day, he comes and meets with this Luke group who are the workers that follow him for 40 days. So you're in the 50 days, you're now on the eighth day. And in Luke, we see the body of the Lord is gone. And this is where we believe, I believe, that the bride of Christ is actually going to be taken on the eighth day. All right? The bride will be taken on the eighth day. But again, it's still possible on the first day because of other things. But you're going to see these two examples again, that this is the bride gone on the eighth day. And what is this also? It's the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. Then you've got uh, uh, Acts chapter 1. So it goes John, Luke, Acts 1, Acts 2. And what do you have? The 40 days come to an end. When the 40 days come to an end, you've now got 7 and 40 because he came on the 8th day, was the beginning of 40 days. And you're now 47 days in. It leaves 3 days. You see, we were thinking maybe the possibility in a recent video that the way it's told to us in Moses that it was 3 days and then 7 and then 40, maybe that's the possibility. I, I've always been hesitant on believing that one unless the time was come had come and gone for this one that was after seven, then 40, and then three. Then I would consider that one. But of course, neither of them happened yet, and we're still seeking and searching these things out until today. And what was this understanding? After seven, then 40 days. 40 days come to an end. They're told not many days from hence. That means it's going to be some number of days. It's not going to be right away after the 40, which means there had to be at least two, three days left. And that's what we know. When you get to Acts chapter two, bang, it's Pentecost. It's true Pentecost. It's the 50th day. They receive the the Holy Ghost and so forth. Okay. What happens? What happens after they receive the Holy Ghost and you go into Acts? Well, the story begins, doesn't it? The story begins at the dove, at the Holy Ghost. The story has now begun. So why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up to say that in this 50 count, in the end days revelation, in the understanding of this 50 of the true Pentecost, we know that the 40, 14 years, or in this case, in the, in the is of what happened when Christ was here and then left, we know then the story of the New Testament, these stories, it, it all begins. You see, there wasn't another 50 that came after this. It was the 50 of Pentecost. Well, it's the same thing when we go to the story of Genesis in Genesis about the ark. We see here yet seven days. And then after seven days, what happened after the seven days? They were all then in the ark. The Lord shut them in. And the 40 days began. So what did you have? You have the same typology when the Lord comes on the eighth day that we got in John. It's like him coming at the beginning of the 50 and saying, hey, I'll be back after seven days. So yet seven days. And when he returns after seven days, what does after seven days mean? It means sometime on the eighth day. So he returned after seven at some time on the eighth day. And when he did, they were shut up or the 40 days of the Son of Man began. You see? So you had seven and then you had 40. <laughs> when we go to Genesis 8, it says, and then the end of the 40 days came. When the end of the 40 days, when the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man come, we know there's going to be what? Three days left to Pentecost. And what happens? We see the raven is going to go out first, and then the dove. Who's the dove? Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? The dove is the Holy Ghost. 
So what do you have here? <clears throat> the raven is the Antichrist spirit. This is the raven. I believe this raven is is uh, is uh, is that spirit of Antichrist going into Assad. By the way, all right. In this case here, this raven, um, I believe, is Assad. Just like Assad is the lion, is, is the mouth, right? The lion is the mouth, the head, the one that speaks. So I believe he's part of it. But this is that raven. Raven means Arab, right? Well, we know something about this timing of this raven going out. So the dove and the raven go out at about the same time, okay? We know in the storyline he took one out, let it out, and with the other one, and let the other one out. But my point is the 50 days is the same layout structure of day counts to the Holy Ghost to the dove as it was from John into Luke into Acts, and when Acts 2 came at the time of the dove, the story of the New Testament began after the Gospels. Well, if we look at the 50 days now at the time of the dove, when it's over, what happens? The 14 years begin. The story of seven days as years and seven days as years. So is there was there another count after the Holy Ghost here, after the dove? No. Nope. It went seven days as years, seven days as years. So there wasn't in this above 14-year portion a period that was 50, 53 days, and then another 50 days. And that's what I had recently thought it was. <clears throat> and one of the reasons was if we go from Savan being the third month, which is Taurus, and we're in Savan because we're looking at Taurus and we were so intent on looking at all these times, yet nothing happened. You see, because what were we what were we looking at? Well, we weren't looking at just the 50 days anymore either. Okay? This is the last day of the year before Tishri, the beginning of the year, starts. So if you go from here and you do a 50-day count, where do you end up? Okay, September 25th, the 29th of Elul, 50 days is August 6th, okay? We know this, we've talked about this. August 6th is the 9th of Av, the day of the first attack, okay? This is gonna be the time of the first attack in Israel, probably northern Israel with Iran and some of those in the northern part, and it's gonna be a short-lived Middle East attack. We've talked about it many, many times. And then... The second attack is the 29th of Elul in that time frame at the year's end. And that attack is going to be by Syria. This is the one with the spirit of the raven that goes in at this time. And it's also at the time you're going to see of somebody else. If it's the time of the raven and it was the raven and the dove, well, you're going to see. Because you see what was happening is... We just recently, I had just recently done the count, like within the last few months this year, and realized that from the 9th of Av to the 29th of Elul was 50 days. That it was 50 days. So when it came to this story of this revelation here from this video, that the Lord had confirmed it, that it was 50, 14, 50, and all of a sudden we didn't have the 50 of Pentecost, but we had the 50 of attack one and then attack two. Well, then I kind of, I could let off the gas of saying, oh, it must have been the Pentecost count. That it wasn't, uh, that it must not have been the Pentecost count, but the Lord was leading us to understand that there was a 50 day count, but it didn't have to be Pentecost. Well, yeah, actually, it kind of did have to be Pentecost because that was the confirmation of the revelation that the 50 days that came before the 14 years actually had to be the 50 days of Pentecost. So I actually just kind of set it aside because we had a 50 and we had Pentecost, right? This timing in here, looking for Pentecost. The question was, were we counting from the right seventh Sabbath or was it this one? Was it the one on the 8th or was it the one on the 15th? 
How was it to be properly counted? The Jews, we know, have it wrong on the 6th. It's believed that it's actually the 8th, and others, like myself, also had believed that it was the 15th of Sivan. Well, you're going to see what the true count is because this revelation I'm going to share with you today, this understanding of Taurus and Sivan and the Lord God counting from the beginning is the entire story of month one, not calling it Nisan, but month one. And we're going to follow the Levitical law of the feast counts. And as we do, you're going to find out for yourself that not only is this the beginning of the 50-day count for the first attack and the second attack, but to the Lord God himself, it is also Pentecost. You got it. It's also Pentecost. See, remember what I was just showing you. After the 50 to the dove, it was seven. Then it was 40. Then it was the last few days, three days. There's no other count, and then it's 14 years. The story of John into Luke into Acts, when the 50 had come, the story began. That's what's taking place. That is what's going on here. You see, one of the other things, you see, in Zechariah chapter 1, this was a very famous one here in this ministry for like four years now. These 70 years. The Lord says he's jealous with a great jealousy these 70 years. And the angel's telling the Lord, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? You see, not Israel. Not the northern portion, but the southern portion from Judah south. I mean, from Jerusalem south. Okay? These 70 years. The Lord says, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was a little displeased and they held forward the affliction, tribulation. Okay? And then we would go, for example, let me show you it over here. Because you can go in this one, you can go to Zechariah chapter 8. See, 14 chapters. Chapter 8 would be like the beginning of trumpets. And you see that in chapter 1, the Lord said that he was jealous with a great fury. Well, now he's no longer jealous. Okay? The Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with a great jealousy. I was jealous for her with a great fury. But now he's returned. It's the mountain of the Lord established above on the mountains above Jerusalem. This is the beginning of trumpets. Well, look at what happens in chapter 7, <laughs> which is the equivalent of the seventh year of seals. We've talked about this a hundred times. It's all past tense. When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years. You see, in chapter one, it said these 70 years. We know this is a typology of the 14 years in chapters to years. And here it is in the seventh year saying those 70 years. When Jerusalem was inhabited and in, and in prosperity. You see, are they inhabited now? Are they in prosperity? Yes. This is telling us that they only did it for 70 years. You see? And so now what happens? Fifth and seventh month. So we go to what we knew in this count of the fifth and seventh month. And look at what we get. The 50 days, right, to here. And they're what? They're the fast in the morning of the fifth and seventh month. You following? They only got to do it for 70 years, and now they're going to be attacked. The 70 years are over. Remember, they came into the land in May. We know where they count, but where does the Lord God count from? Lord God counts from Savan. The 70 years in the Lord God's eyes are over. They're over. To the house of Judah, the 70 years end right here, and day one of 71 begins right here. Okay? So, 
one of the things was we know that in this count of the end of days, the fasting in the morning of the fifth month and the fasting in the morning of the seventh month, it's this one right here, but they don't celebrate it. They don't observe it on, on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, okay, because it's, it's, a fa it's a feast of the Lord. So they moved it to the third day, the fast of Gedalia. It actually happened at Tishri 1, okay? The last day to Tishri 1. And so we knew that they couldn't observe these things. So whatever it was that we were looking to connect for the 50 to the end of days had to include these two attacks. Now, how is it possible that these two attacks, how is it possible that these two attacks can also equal the period of time of, of Pentecost. It doesn't seem to make any sense, does it? it? It's a big issue because of the sun. Well, let me show you now what I was talking about very briefly. You guys have all seen this before, but watch what happens now. We've understood now that this portion of the above is this 50-day count, as well as the Pentecost 50-day count. That it's not what we were looking at, where they were a separate 50 days, which brought us to here, and then left us two to three days to the ninth of Av, and then another 50-day count. So we had been looking at the possibility that the Pentecost count came first, and then there would be another 50 of the fasting in the morning of the fifth and seventh month. However, John and Luke and to Acts never showed us another 50. The story of, of the ark never showed us another 50. And why is the ark so important to us? Because of Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, he tells us, okay, he's going to be as lightning from one end unto the other when he comes in his day, which is when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. But he says, but first. This but first is Luke's discourse. This is when he comes for 40 days of the Son of Man. And what does he say? He must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. He's talking about the final generation because they're asking him about when he comes. What are going to be the signs of the end of days? And then what does he say? He says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. So clearly a different period of time, because here he said day, and here he's saying his days. So he's talking about a time of Noah, not like the one in Matthew. He's talking only about the 40 days. And he says they did eight, they drank, they married and were given in marriage until the day that they got in the ark and the Lord and, and the flood came and destroyed them all. This is the 40 days of the Son of Man. So when we go to the story, this is why we went to the story of the ark. Did the Lord give us a clue that there was another 50 or another 40 or something else going in there? No. We took this. We understood what he was talking about. We understood to where it was talking about of him as the 40 days of the Son of Man. And we went to the story of the ark. And the story of the ark gave us 50 days with a 7, a 40, and then a short period, which is about three days, we know. And then it was 7 and 7 for 14 years. So my whole point and what I'm trying to get at <coughs> is there wasn't a 50 and then a 50. It was simply 150. Now, let me show you this. This is, as you guys know, from Jodell. This was that confirmation I got. That video I did on March 10th of 2020. And this came to me March 11th, 2020 at 12.40 a.m. Just hours later. After I had prayed an hour earlier to the Lord to say, Lord, please confirm it. I'm freaking out. I just told them that after the 50, the 14 years begins this year. I said, I'm taking this video down. If I have misunderstood, I'm taking it down. I, if you don't give me a sign, Lord, if you don't let me know by confirming a number 50 and letting me know that I was on track, I'm taking it down. 
And I get this, I see it at about one o'clock in the morning. And as soon as I see this, I said, oh my goodness. And I read the first part and she says, this email message is totally guided by the Holy Spirit, which I say with full regard to that statement and the implications that come with making such a claim. She knew how important it was that what she was saying was to be understood and true from the Holy Spirit. And she knew what lying about it would mean to the Lord. Okay? And what did she give me? The 50-minute mark of the video. I had asked the Lord for a 50. And then what does she say? It literally took me hours to settle down after watching your video. And I knew immediately that I was supposed to let you know you are right on target. And she put it in... uh, (laughs) <laughs> now, now I'm stumping because I was going to say brackets. I always say brackets in quotations. <laughs> Thanks to our brother, Brian. He's like, you mean quotations? I'm like, no, my bad. So in quotations, she put these. This was from the Holy Spirit right on target. This brought about, brothers and sisters, everything about the 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 the, the being right on target. It brought everything about the uh, uh, the ox, the bull that came to be understood. We started. I started doing a lot of videos, as you come to see later on, with um, the bull equaling resurrection. The beginning. You see that? It's called the. I've got a video called the beginning. Yet it never dawned on me what it meant directly as the beginning. I mean, it did. But it it didn't fully because it made no sense because of the sun. Because of the movement of the sun. You see, we had bull, all sorts of things, bull. Because we knew the Lord. I knew the Lord was connecting all of this to Taurus. And as you know from the last video, that one eye equals uh, is called bullseye. It means 50 And 50 means noon, which is 14. And it's the 14th brightest star in the sky. And it's the revelation of this ministry. And the Lord confirmed it. Of course I was understanding it was Taurus. Of course I was understanding it was Taurus. And it was all because of this. I needed this. Without this, guys, right here. Without this email from the Holy Spirit. We would have never gotten to the understanding of this point. It wouldn't have been possible. She went through a major attack, a major spiritual attack to get this word to me. To get these three little words to me, she had to endure a major attack like she had never had before. You see? Because she had to get me right on target. And those three words would reveal to us Taurus. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Well, guess what? We had something else happen today from our sister, Trisha. And it was a mind blower. It had me in tears. I was telling everything to my wife, as I told you guys earlier. And this right here is our forum. Like I said, there's like a close to a thousand people in here now. And you have to understand, you know, when when people have dreams or a vision or or they something from the Lord or they're just sharing things, they don't highlight me on everything, all right? When somebody has a dream or like when Trisha posts stuff, she doesn't highlight. So when you see it like this, this red ministry revealed, it was highlighted for me to see it. She doesn't always do that. Very few people do that because I see most of the posts and if they feel it's really important, they might let me know, Okay. But it doesn't happen often, especially with Trisha, one of our one of our rock solid ones from very early on. She helped us with the book and everything as well. A very, very trusted sister in Christ. Very powerful one as well. And so she thought that this was important for me to understand that she had two dreams last night. This was posted this afternoon. And she had two dreams. And the first one was really intense. Um, it jarred her awake at 3.32 in the morning. Uh, you can you can pause and read it here for yourself. Uh, it was about moving and moving boxes, and all of a sudden there was robbers there. And then boom, she woke up and she was startled. And 
you know, she was making this known to me and I'm like, okay, I don't know what that one was. You know, you have to understand, I'm not, I wasn't expecting anything. I was just reading it and she wanted to share something, but she felt it was significant for me somehow to understand it. And that was dream one, but she said there was two dreams. When I read the second dream, I instantly started welling up. And then, yes, crying like a baby, all right. <laughs> all right. So here's the second dream. She had a tough time going to sleep after that first one. She finally goes back to sleep. And then she says, in the second dream, she says, I finally fell back asleep and woke up this morning uh, at 921 this morning with this sick, with this dream, the second one. I sat, uh, um, I am at my desk working on a PowerPoint presentation. I am working on the last slide and I see it on my screen. It's a huge 40 in the middle and above it says, the mistakes are over. My sense is that the final understanding of the 40 days of the Son of Man are coming and it will be final. I still get goosebumps now. I'm still, I, I'm wearing shorts. I can feel it down my legs, my spine. Brothers and sisters, this was my Jodell confirmation in this version from Trisha. She puts it in quotations. The mistakes are over. You know what Trisha didn't know? I had already believed that I had received the understanding that the 40 days were now understood and that it was part of the final 50. I had already believed it. I was already making posts and telling people <coughs> this next video. I got it. I said, I believe with all my heart now this is it. Not just a believe and a thinking and, and that sense of, of, of understanding it, but I know. And when I saw this, all the weight of that knowing just oh, landed on my heart, landed on my shoulders, landed in my spirit and on my, in my mind, all at once realizing the joy, the excitement, the terror, the, the, the chaos, the death, the resurrection, all of it just... Oh, And it was the most exciting thing ever at the same time. Because I got the 40 days of the Son of Man and the mistakes are over. I don't know if you guys know that, I believe it was in the last video, maybe the one before, but I think the last one, I even said something about mistakes. That never once in any of the revelations, in any of the understandings, in, in any of the, the understanding of dates based on, on how things were lining up, never once was I lying to you. I absolutely believed those were the ones. They were mistakes, not lies, is what I said. And now I get the confirmation that the mistakes are over just as I got right on target. Right on target, brothers and sisters, means bullseye. Right on target, do a Google search. <coughs> it means bullseye, okay? It means bullseye. It means right on target. It means in the middle, on the 50 every time. It was confirming the 50, 14, 50, that after those 50 days, the 14 years would begin. And now that I realize that I had received it, that I had understood the revelation, I get the confirmation after praying and asking the Lord for it, that the mistakes are over. So brothers and sisters, to the best of my ability, I have never received an audible from the Lord. I have never received a thus saith the Lord. The best I have received is the revelation of reading scripture and understanding who it speaks to when in the portions of tribulation. <coughs> and the best I've received from the Holy Spirit 
was this one time you've heard me say over the years, over the last two years, from Jodell, and now I've got one from Trisha. So to the absolute best of the Holy Spirit leading of this ministry, what I'm telling you right now is the 50 days before the 14 years begin exactly where we thought they did on August 6th, from the 5th into the 6th of 2022. And now I'm going to show it to you and show you <clears throat> that we were, we, we've been duped with Venus. I was duped with Venus, but I should have known better because I did a video on it. But, but how did it happen? Well, because when you go read the scripture and you go to the concordance, it tells you it's Venus. This shows that it's not perfect, but for the vast majority, if you don't have something like an e-sword, brothers and sisters, if you don't have an e-sword where you can go into the Strong's concordance numbers, you're missing out on, on massive, massive understanding of scripture. Understanding what the words mean, okay, is a big deal in where they're connected. And that's what happened with Revelation chapter 22. It was a big deal. And no, I'm not taking down that last video because, because Venus was wrong. You can essentially apply the understanding of that was given there to the Venus, or not the Venus, to the bright and morning star that I'm going to show you is the truth today. You see, this was the issue relating to dawn as an epithet for Venus, and it's only given to us once. So the understanding is, if Venus was the representation of Christ, then we went to G3722. And when we went to G3722, what did we get? We got the incredible revelation of Luke 24 and John chapter 8. Why was this so fantastic to us? Because John chapter 8 at the beginning at the early in the morning and Luke chapter 24 early in the morning are the two chapters where we have proven scripturally in the end time revelation that begin the 40 days of the son of man. So for me, it was proving that this indeed was correct. That the number of this meaning, this number relation, was absolutely connected to Christ. And it still is 100% absolutely connected to Christ in the definition of the word, except this is where they screwed up. It was not supposed to be Venus. It is not Venus. All right? It was never to be Venus. I'm going to show you in a moment. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. Because I want to I want you guys to understand Savan. I want you to understand this Taurus count. But you see, it's going to sound it's going to sound like it's a little bit off, like, like it, it can't be. Because the sun and the movement of the sun with the moon in the constellations, we know where spring is. We know where the, the equinox is. We know where the solstices are. So how can it be? By the wandering sun is how it is. The sun never kept its course. And we've taught on this. You see, remember how excited we got when we were reading this from Jubilees? The third month, see, and, and remained seven days and then celebrated the old grain? This old grain is the bride of Christ. <clears throat> and we know it. We know it. Do you know what we missed? The months aren't named. It's not Savan. It wasn't the third month from Nisan to Ayar and then Savan. 
It was the third month. Do you know what the, what the counts were? Do you know where the sun was? Do you know where spring was back thousands of years ago? Let's go have a look and see what Moses has to tell us about it. Okay? We see Moses. First Passover, right? The first Passover of Moses. The 14th day we know is Passover. The 15th is the beginning of unleavened bread. Then, right, that they fled on the 15th day. And they fled. It was unleavened bread. And then it began the Shemitah, um, the, the, the counts for the seven Sabbaths. We've understood these things. And then it's the count of Pentecost. Okay? Let me show you this real quick. We'll probably touch on it in a bit. We've taught on this many times. Let me show you. Let me show you. First fruits, feast of weeks, right? Seventh Sabbath shall be complete, even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days. This is not saying the 50th day, or it would have said 50th day. It said to count, to number 50 days. <clears throat> the evidence is so crystal clear. All you got to do is go up to Passover, the 14th day, the beginning of unleavened bread, the 15th day. It could have easily just said the 50th day. After the seventh Sabbath shall you number the 50th day. It didn't say that. It said number 50 days. Count 50 days. Okay? We've understood this. We've explained it recently. We've broken these things down. And we know it's true. We know it's understood. And let me show you this with the first Exodus. Okay? The first, uh, at the Exodus, with Moses at the time of the first Passover, was about 1446 BC. So let's go to Stellarium. And let me help you guys see this, okay? 1445, 1446, it's the same thing. You know, it doesn't matter that it's off by a year. We're talking about where the beginning of the year was, okay? Where what we call Nisan is now, okay? Nisan now in our lifetime is in Pisces. When Christ was here, it was in Aries. But to the Lord God, the beginning has always been Taurus. When the flesh began, it was Taurus. When the first Passover was, was, was given to, um, to Moses, 1445-1446, again, it's the whole zero thing, is April 9th, okay? See the, see the moon? It's about, that would be dark moon from the 9th into the 10th. There you go. From the 9th into the 10th is day one, okay? In Taurus, April 9th, to the 10th. Well, let's go have a look. Let's go see what that was in 1445 BC or 146 on the Roman, you see? Let's go see what Nisan 1, see? It just shouldn't be called Nisan. It should be called month 1. Okay, that's what the Bible tells us. And look at where Nisan 1 is. 9th of April. The 9th of April was month 1, or Nisan 1, at the time of Moses. 1445 BC, April 9th, where is it? Taurus. Do you understand how important this is, guys? To the Lord God, His constellations have never changed. Do you know what that means? The stars have never moved. They have remained the same. What else can we show? <coughs> that, this shows 
that the very first covenant of Passover that the Lord God made at, for Passover with the flesh was Taurus. Okay? Watch this. We've shared this before. Okay? All about Taurus. Listen to this. To the Egyptians, the constellation Taurus was a sacred bull that was associated with the renewal of life in spring, when the spring equinox entered Taurus, the constellation would become covered by the sun in the western sky as spring began. To the early Hebrews, Taurus was the first constellation in the zodiac and consequently it was represented as the first letter in their alphabet, Aleph. See? What else do we know? In the beginning. What is the beginning? The beginning is Taurus. Let me show it to you. Right here, in their alphabet. It'll clear up in a second. See, in their alphabet. Watch this. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and another 11. There are 22 letters in their alphabet. Okay? Remember I said 14. Go to 14. It's noon. 14 is the noon. The is, is Hosea, and, and then name changed to Yeshua. Okay? The father's name is noon, which means 14, which is the equivalent of 50. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 200, 300, 400. That is the count. That is the number system for the Hebrews, for the Jews. What's the beginning? The ox. Taurus. The head. You see, everything I told you, is related to Taurus. Taurus was the beginning. Taurus is the beginning. Taurus is the beginning of their alphabet. Do you know Taurus <coughs> also means head of the year? Do you know that Rosh, as in every single month, is called Rosh? Do you know that? See, it's Rosh Kodesh Savan. Now, oh, where's another one? Rosh Kodesh Ayar. Do you know what Rosh means? Beginning. <laughs> Why? Because Rosh means beginning. Rosh is the head of Taurus. It's the beginning. Do you know what? Do you know what uh, they call the beginning of the year? Right? Tishri one, Rosh Hashanah. All of you guys know this already, right? What is Rosh Hashanah? The head of the year. See? Not because it's Taurus, but because it means beginning. It's another beginning. So every time something relates to beginning, it comes from the root of beginning. What is the root of beginning? Taurus. Taurus, 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 and Taurus again. It's all about Taurus, guys. You understand that? <clears throat> Remember what they do at, at Rosh Hashanah? At the beginning, at the head of the year? They blow the trumpets, right? <clears throat> I think I read that they blow the trumpets a hundred times a, a day, right? And Rosh Hashanah, so the head of the year lasts one to two days. They're waiting for that crescent of the new moon. And then declare with the blowing of the trumpets. And they sound the trumpet repeatedly like a hundred times. Well, what does that equal this year? We know that the equivalent of this time is what? The second attack. <clears throat> the second attack. This is the second attack. This is the one by the Arab. 
by the one represented as the raven. This is the attack by the lion, the king of the north that we've talked about, the lion, uh, the lion of the north. We know this is Assad, that it's Syria, like uh, Second First Chronicles or Second Chronicles twenty four tells us. The Jews are all puffed up like nobody's going to defeat us. We're too powerful, and boom. They're destroyed for their pride and their arrogance and their disobedience, and they're removed for the next seven years. And when are they? When is this going to happen? While they're sounding the trumpet, kind of sounds familiar too, doesn't it? <coughs> sounds like sounds like uh, Jeremiah chapter four. What's Jeremiah chapter four? Starting in verse seven, the lion has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. That's the bear. Because we know who's getting destroyed first. There's one attack on Israel. Then a second attack comes. And that second attack removes them from the land, as we said. It's the one by the lion, by Assad coming from the north. And then the Gentiles, the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. That is the bear. That is Russia. That'll be World War III later on this fall. Yep. And when you follow it down, and it's talking about the lion, what is it talking about? It's talking about them being surrounded, being compassed about. That a declaration is going to be made from Dan, published from Ephraim, probably America. And it's against the cities of Judah, uh, against Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. Precisely as Zechariah chapter 7 said, those 70 years. Guys, this is that wording. Well, listen to what it says in verse 19. See, because they were rebellious, they're going to be surrounded and destroyed. My bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because thou hast heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war, destruction upon destruction. The whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? How fitting is that? That the destruction at the sound of the trumpet is the destruction coming at the sound of the trumpet. Right on time. Precisely as the scripture said. So we've understood this, haven't we? We've understood this. We understood that according to Zechariah, according to this count, when they came into the land and according to Zechariah, it must equal the Hebrew calendar. There's no way around it equaling the Hebrew calendar. If it didn't equal the Hebrew calendar and it was it was a month later down here in Sheshvan or, or, or further, it would make no sense. Because this is the head of the year. This is the beginning of their year. And this is when they begin the new seven-year Shemitah cycle after the four and 70. This is the final beginning of the final two sets of 14. So we've known this with the Hebrew calendar, that the Hebrew calendar is accurate to what Zechariah tells us. But the Lord confirmed Savant, uh, not Savant, the Lord confirmed Taurus. So there's an issue with this connection to Taurus, isn't there? There was, there's an issue for it. Well, you know where the issue starts to end? When you realize that if the beginning is Taurus, that when God made the covenant with the flesh and with man, that the beginning was Taurus. And that everything he calls beginning equals the foundation to Taurus. And that the Lord represents Taurus, the head, the beginning. What if we count from the Lord God's timing? What if we count according to Taurus as the beginning? And we do so in 2022. Okay, 
let's go to 2022. Okay, there we go. You see the moon, May 5th. We go to the calendar. We go to April, oops, May 31st. I mean, did I say May 5th? We go to May 31st. And what do we see? It was the beginning of Taurus. So, if this is the beginning of Taurus, okay? If this is the beginning of Taurus, and we want to match up to what the Lord created in the flesh, and that everything was based on Taurus, and even the Jews know it. If we go now, and we say, okay, Taurus is the beginning. Taurus is the month called Savan, but we know it as the beginning. It means month one to the Lord God. What do we know about the 14th? 14th is Passover, right? What happened? Christ had the Passover meal, right, on the evening portion. He goes up to the mountain to pray. He's then taken into the hands of sinful men. He's spit on and so forth and brought into prison. And then early in the morning, on the 14th of Savan, on the 14th of the first month, he's now brought before them. He's crucified, put in the grave before sunset of the 14th, because that would then be the Sabbath, the 15th day. He's in the grave for the total of the 15th day, as far as we know. He's there the whole time. And he's there till early in the morning on the 16th of the first month. They go to the grave early on the 16th of the first month, and he's gone, right? Then what happens? You have unleavened bread, right? You have the seven days for unleavened bread. And then what does it say? The Sabbath after. So here's the Sabbath after. And now we do the count to um, a, 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 a Feast of Weeks. So you got what? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're looking for the seventh Sabbath. Eight. Uh, sorry, seven. So we had seven Sabbaths every month. It's the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Those are the true Sabbath days every month. We've taught on it many times. The 7th Sabbath is the 8th of the month, not the 15th. It is the 8th of the month. Do you know what happens after the 7th Sabbath? Remember what we just talked about? Then shall you number 50 days. What 50 are these? John 8 to Luke 24 to Acts 1 and Acts 2. It's Genesis chapter 7 into Genesis chapter 8, where there's the 50 days to the dove, the 50 days to the Holy Ghost, and then the 14 begins, and then the, the, the New Testament portion begins. <coughs> According to the Lord God's count, seventh Sabbath, then on the morrow after, <clears throat> excuse me, shall you number 50 days. These 50 days, brothers and sisters, I showed you them earlier. From the 6th of August, 50 days is the 25th of September. I showed them to you, and we've understood them from the story of Zechariah with the fifth and the seventh month. But you know what we also needed them for? We needed them, according to the Lord God, to be the 50 days of Pentecost. So if we don't look at Savan as month three, <clears throat> But Savan is actually month one to the Lord God. 
It was all about this video back here. Just a little over two years ago. It was all about the revelation of the 50 before the 14. This was the revelation of the end of days. And the connection <coughs> was, he was telling us in that video, Taurus. Taurus, over and over and over again in the last two years and change, has been Taurus. It was to let me know that I had understood that Aldebaran, this star, is the 14th brightest star in the sky, and it's number 50 because it counts from Taurus. The understanding is the beginning of the year is Taurus to the Lord God. Do you understand why this was confusing? Why it was, why it was difficult to understand? Because if we follow the sun, we know we're what? We know we're off by two months. Because according to the sun, this is Nissan. According to the stars, this is Nissan. But guess what? We're living in this world, so we have to go according to the sun. <coughs> we have to go according to the S-U-N. Because it's the light of the S-U-N and the heat of the S-U-N for the crops that's allowing these things. But guess what? It didn't mean the Lord God changed. Who changed, brothers and sisters? The sun changed, did he not? It was the sun, S-U-N, that changed. Okay? It was the sun that changed. When we go to, <clears throat> when we go back now and we look at Revelation 22 and we, we look at this Venus and we realize that this isn't Venus. You want to know why it's not Venus? And this was, again, I did this video like three years ago. But when I saw this connection that this comes from Luke 24 and John 8, 1, I, I knew it was connected. I knew it had to be Christ. It is. But the mistake was Venus. I'll prove it to you that it can't be Venus. We all know it. It's in Jude chapter 1. <clears throat> I think verse 13. Listen to what it says. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. What is Venus, brothers and sisters? Venus is a planet. What is a planet? A planet is a wandering star. When God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, did he create planets? No, not according to Genesis 1.24. Do you know why they're wandering stars? Because they're the representation of the fallen angels. They have fallen from the firmament. The stars never change. They do not leave their estates. The wandering stars are a group of the representation of a group of those fallen ones. Does this mean that um, that, that planet is that fallen angel, that, that one of those lead fallen angels? No, it's a representation. So clearly, according to Jude 1 verse 13, Christ cannot be represented as Venus because Venus is a wandering star, a planet to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That would make it impossible for Christ to be Venus. You see, what was Christ, brothers and sisters? Christ was the light on the third day, right? First, Christ was the beginning, right? He was the beginning. He was the word in the beginning that God created, that God used <coughs> to create the heaven and the earth. 
Then God made Christ light. You catch that? Right? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. This is the true light. This true light cannot be in darkness forever. He's divided. He's divided. He is the light, not the darkness. So it is impossible for Venus, who is a wandering star, a planet in the vast darkness, who is there in darkness forever, it is impossible to be Christ. So this completely eliminates, you see, and this was something that Trisha had posted that I told you guys at the beginning that Trisha had posted along these lines. I didn't read the whole thing because I got it right away as I was reading it. And then I saw what Charlie posted. And I was remembered of the video that I did and said, wait a second, it can't be Venus. Well, you know what? We know Christ isn't the sun. He's not the S-U-N either. Do we see a reference where, you know, his brightness and, you know, there's, there's a reference as a typology sometimes? Yes, sure. Okay, but do you know that there's the bright morning star of Revelation 22 that we saw? And then over in, what is it, Isaiah 16 or 17 or something like that, that that Lucifer is called the, the bright star, uh, the, the morning star. So you've got the bright morning star and you've got the morning star, both as a reference to the bright morning star. But one is Lucifer, one is Christ. Then you've got the sun, the S-U-N. We get the occasional scripture that mentions Christ as the typology with the brilliance being as the sun. But then we have Lucifer, who is also the reference of the S-U-N. You see how there's this, <clears throat> there's this confusion, this, this, this twisting between the two. Why? Because one is the true light. And the other is the false light. Right? One is the true light. One is the false light. When was the sun created? The sun wasn't created till the fourth day. It wasn't until the fourth day. To give light upon the earth, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. You see? So Christ isn't the sun in the S-U-N. The S-O-N is the light that was created, who he became this light before the S-U-N was even created. So it's impossible to be Venus who is wandering around in the darkness. It's literally impossible. And so we've got this, this twisting of the two. Why? Well, because Lucifer was the cherub who surrounds Christ. He was one of the cherub that fell. We taught on that not too long ago. He was all magnificently arrayed. And in his beauty, he fell in his pride. Lucifer is a representation of the Antichrist. Right? And so what is he? If he's the antichrist, he's also what? The anti-light. He's the false light, is he not? Christ is the true light. And what about the sun? Well, the sun's not in the firmament either. The sun was gloriously arrayed. What happened to the sun? What happened to the S-U-N, guys? Did the S-U-N not go off its course? Did it not go off its course? In this time of the flesh, it's gone off its course by almost two, uh, by, by two months. Is that obedience to the Lord God, to the Father? Is that an obedience in the S-U-N? Impossible. That would be disobedience because it kept not its course. Because the course was in the beginning, Taurus. 
And what has he done? This, this false light that rules over the world, who is, who's gone off course. He's changed seasons and times. Hello. This is the big picture. There's an end of day season and time changing, but this is that big picture of creation changing of seasons and times. And it was done by the S-U-N. This is the true light. Well, guess what? Do you know another name for the sun or for Lucifer? Do you know the sun's name? What's Lucifer's nickname? The bringer of light. The morning star. Okay? Lucifer means morning star. What was the other one I had? Who is the morning sun? If you look up... Uh, oh, I lost track of it. If you look up um, the sun... It's Lucifer. See, do you believe that Lucifer represents the sun? You see, remember what we talked about in the previous video? When you go into, is it chapter 2 of Exodus, maybe chapter 3, and you go to the word evil, the word evil is the word Ra. Remember we talked about that in the last video? It's absolutely wickedness, right? It's bad, it's evil, it's affliction, calamity, distress, sorrow, trouble. And it's Ra. When you go look it up, maybe it's on this one. When you look it up, you find out that, um, no, I just can't remember which one I clicked on. You find out that Lucifer, of course, means bringer of light. Okay. And if you do, um, what is, maybe I do have it here. <clears throat> no. Nope. When you, when you do look it up, the reason why it was the 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 Egyptians worshipped Ra, which is evil, what were they worshiping? They were worshiping the sun god. They were worshiping the bringer of light, Lucifer. Lucifer is the representation of the sun. The false light with the, the authority over the earth. And Ra was the sun god, the S-U-N god, who went and changed seasons and times. So am I saying that Lucifer is the sun? No. He's a representation of the sun. And we know from Jude that all the planets are those wandering stars to whom is reserved everlasting darkness. So clearly, it cannot be that the bright and morning star is Venus, and clearly the S-U-N <coughs> is not the light that Christ was as the light in the Hebrew 2.16 at the beginning of the days. So then, who is Christ? Or I mean, what represents Christ? What is this bright and morning star? Well, I was looking at this bright and morning star as Venus still, right? And I was trying to understand it as Venus to say, when does it come up as the bright and morning star? Because what I was trying to do at that point is I was looking to say, well, when can I see that the bright and morning star first comes up? And then it says it's like from April till sometime in August. And I thought, huh, is there this connection? But then, of course, as we just covered with Jude and with others, it was crystal clear that it was impossible for him to be Venus. So I'm going to delete that, and we're going to look to see what is the brightest star in the sky. And what you come to find out is that it's Serious. I was going to name this video, Are You Serious? With serious like this. But then I thought, man, you guys are going to say it's too much like Paul Begley, and I don't want that. So what do we see? We see it's called 
the brightest star. You know what was pretty freaky, by the way? The brightest star in the sky, as you're about to see, is Sirius, as many of you guys probably already know. It's the brightest star in the entire sky. And you're going to see how it represents Christ and the timing. But you know what's pretty crazy? Aldebaran, 5014, right? 1450 is the one that represents this ministry is the 14th brightest in the sky. That's pretty wild. That just made me say, oh my goodness, Lord, what is going on? Okay. So as you, as you dig into this and you look into Sirius and you start finding out that it was called the bright and morning star. Okay. Let me see. It's, it's vastly the brightest star in the sky by a lot. And I think it's like, oh, what did they say? It's like, 10,000 times the sun, I think, the size of it. So it's a really big deal. Like, it's massive. And then I started looking into stuff about this, about, uh, uh, um, uh, about Sirius. Nicknamed Dog Star, uh, Sirius conjunction with the sun, the ancient believe, the combination. So, of course, you're going to see things where, where the ancients did all sorts of different pagan worships and stuff like that. But of course, the S-U-N Ra was the one they were really focused on. And so you start doing some searching and you find out that Sirius is the brightest star in the sky that remained, it's in the firmament, right? That never loses its brightness, right? That never wanders, never goes off track. Okay, and it's the absolute brightest one in the sky. Well, guess what? You keep doing searching on it, like I said, and you find out that it's called the bright and morning star. Sirius, the bright and morning star. There was debates, as I had told you, that the bright and morning star of, of Cyrus, oh, I did have this one open, that um, the bright and morning star was debated years ago over the centuries as to whether it was Venus or whether it was Sirius. And for some reason, in the concordance, they decided to go with Venus. I don't know the reasoning for it. But the truth was, they were supposed to go, they should have gone with Sirius. And I'm going to show you how perfect it is and how I knew that I knew this was it. Listen to what it says. Okay. Brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. Um, what else do we have? See, it's with a period of almost exactly 365.25 days. So it holds constant always in the year. What else does it say? Da, 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 where was the one I want to see? So if you guys remember the... Um, we talked about this in the past, right? That the ancient Egyptians, at the annual flooding of the Nile, they own the, the, the owing of the flood's own irregularity, the extreme precision of the star's return made it important to the Egyptians. Of course, the Egyptians turned around and worshipped it and everything else. But do you know why they did it and when they did it? It was all about the annual flooding of the Nile. We talked about this a while ago. This annual flooding of the Nile, they knew that when they saw this bright and morning star at a certain time of year, they knew spring had started. You see? They knew, <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. They knew that summer had begun. They knew that was the time of summer. And it was bringing in about this flood. Remember, they knew Taurus was when spring began. But it was, it was this bright and morning star. When it became visible before the sun, they knew this annual flooding and summer had started. Well, listen to this. <clears throat> the ancient Greeks were the same. The ancient Greeks observed the appearance of Sirius as the morning star heralded the hot and dry summer and feared that the star caused plants to wilt. 
men to weaken and women to become aroused. Owing to its brightness, Sirius would have been seen to twinkle more in the unsettled weather conditions of early summer. The Greek observers, this signified uh, emen emanations that caused malignant influences. And it goes on to talk about starstruck, flaming, burning. What they knew is that it meant it was the beginning of summer. Here it is. The importance of the Anakonas would offer sacrifice to, si to Sirius uh, and Zeus to bring cooling breezes that would await the appearance of the star in summer. Okay? All of these things were related to this bright and morning star, which would signify summer having begun. Well, guess what? Savan. To us, it's during Savan now in Taurus where summer is. So if you were looking at this for summer and you were going to the third month, you're looking for, for, for where it would have been, where it would have signified this time frame of summer. Because Savan or Taurus wasn't the third month. It was the first month. So if Taurus was the first month and you're looking for summer, summer would be the third month, right? This is your time frame and you're talking about summer. This is how they knew when that star rose. So in counting as we have counted and we say this is month one to the Lord God, this was Passover. Unleavened bread, Sabbath one, Sabbath two, three, four, five, six, seventh Sabbath. And then from the morrow after shall you number 50 days. And these are the 50 of Pentecost. This is John chapter um, 20. When day one, when he meets with the apostles. And then what? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven days. This is the eighth day. What do we know, according to Luke chapter 12, takes place during one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days? There's a wedding, right? As your Lord when he returns from a wedding. So this is why I say, you know, it looks like this is where the group is going to go. And then this is the group of workers. Christ comes and anoints the apostles by breathing on them first the Holy Ghost. And maybe this is when the bride is gone. Because Luke says, as your Lord, when he returns from the wedding. Well, guess what? Do you see what this seventh day is, brothers and sisters? To be of the Jewish holiday of love. To the Jews, this is their number one day for weddings. What? It's the number one day for weddings for Jews. And where is it? The seventh day of the seven-day wedding. Before the Lord returns, August 12th, it'll be on August 12th, August 12th into the 13th, when he comes at the eighth day. Okay? On this side of the world, you know, it'd be in the morning, right? the morning portion of 12. We know it goes from evening to evening. We know in Luke, in, in John, it would be like him meeting with them here. And in Luke 24, he meets with them early in the morning on the 13th, on the eighth day. Luke 24, right? Early in the morning. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> Let me start in John chapter 8, okay? Remember John chapter 8 had the one that said Venus. It was the connection from, from uh, the bright morning star that we were told is Venus, but this should be X'd out, and it should say Sirius. This word is the one right here that is the dawn of early morning at the rising light. It's this one right here. 
what happens? This is why I still say, I believe the bride is actually going to go at the time of the eighth day. <clears throat> because this is the beginning of the son of man's 40 days. And it's the woman taken in adultery. Talking about how he's the only one that could cast the first stone. He's bent over on one knee. We've shared this dozens of times, hundred times. And then when it's over with this woman, he says he's the light of the world. <clears throat> we know when he begins his 40 days, he comes as the light of the world. So <clears throat> when we go to Luke 24, this same reference of this word right here, this same reference for early in the morning, early in the morning, and the word morning is used a dozen times, but only these two in the Gospels of John 8 and Luke 24 equal the one of Christ when he comes to begin his 40 days, which would be when? The 12th into the 13th of August, right? Because he's the bright and morning star. And the bright and morning star was John 8, 1 and Luke 24, 1. Both of these we've been teaching for years are the time when Christ comes to begin his 40 days. <clears throat> Christ is the head and his bride is the body. I've been teaching that the Lord, the body of the Lord is gone and that's why they're perplexed. This is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. Which means what? It's right here. So what about the attack, Alan? If this is the first attack, well, do you remember what we saw? Even, even, in, uh, even in Jeremiah 4? Remember what we said? They'll be surrounding her round about. Who? Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. Who's the one in this surrounding bringing the attack? The lion. This is the evidence that the, that the cry, the warning that the Lord is giving while he's here for 40 days isn't actually just the, isn't the time of the first attack. This is the second attack. This is what Luke 21 is telling us, right? We've shared this many times. Oh, don't worry. I'm coming back to that early in the morning to blow your mind. Okay? I want to establish and let you see this compassing about that we see many times. All right? And when Jerusalem shall be compassed about with armies. We talked in the last video as well. The, the triumphal, triumphal entry and the story that follows is as Christ coming for his 40 days. And he says, when a, when a trench is cast about, round about. This is all Judah. Zechariah 7 said the same thing. It's Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. Jeremiah said the same. Luke said the same. Which is telling us that this first attack is going to happen. I think what we're going to see, I mean, what's going to happen? The 50 days begin. The Lord will breathe on the, the spirit into whoever these modern day apostles are. And the first attack will take place. It'll be short lived. But remember, he's not in Jerusalem yet. I mean, I mean, he, even if he meets these guys, I don't know where these apostles will be. If he gathers them, I don't know how it's going to work. But Jerusalem isn't being attacked. Remember, he shared that in the last video. Iran wants to attack northern Israel. They're going to attack Haifa and Tel Aviv. That's what they've been wanting forever to attack. Jerusalem and the south of Judah, the cities of Judah, is when the second attack comes by Syria. This is the time of the compassing about. This is what Christ is warning about here. This is what Luke 21, Jeremiah 4, all these places are talking about. So when Christ comes, he returns after seven days at the eighth day. Remember John chapter 20? Remember, remember the story of the ark? After seven on the eighth day? Remember Luke chapter nine? After about an eight days? 
what happens? This right here equals Luke chapter 24, verse 1 through 3, and it equals John 8, verse 1, when the woman is standing before him. You see what I'm saying? So how did I know? How on earth is this now supposed to be the 40 days of the Son of Man? So we had after seven to the eighth day, you got the 40 days of the Son of Man. <clears throat> that brings you to, I guess, somewhere right around here. Okay? And you got one, two, three days to the Holy Ghost before that attack of that compassing about takes place. Right at that same time, one will happen first and then the attack. Okay? That means Christ is here during this time. And then you've got the final three days, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and then the attack at the year's end. But that means this is when the Holy Ghost of Pentecost is going to anoint. It kind of seems weird, doesn't it? To say this is true Pentecost. We're saying this is true Pentecost at the time of trumpets? Doesn't make sense, does it? Because we even saw <laughs> in Jeremiah chapter 4 that it's the time when they're blowing trumpets and everything else. We saw, you, you read that it's the year's end in, um, in uh, uh, Second Chronicles 24 in relation to, I think it was 2 Chronicles, maybe 1 Chronicles, where it talks about Syria attacking. Let me go to it. Oh, don't worry, I'm building up and saving the best for last on purpose. Second Chronicles 24, okay? This portion right here. And at the end of the year, Syria came up with a host against Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed them. Syria had a small army, but the Lord will deliver them, deliver Judah and Jerusalem into the hands of Syria. And it's at the year's end. So you see, this is why it was so difficult to accept that what the Lord was showing was that, was that Taurus was the beginning of the count. Not the third month and the beginning of everything starting, <clears throat> but that it was the beginning of the count. And look, everything said the year's end. So I just showed you where it said the year's end when Syria is going to attack. All of these places equal the year's end. This is the beginning of the 14 years when they're then going to be removed. So clearly the connections are on the Hebrew calendar. But do you see now what I just showed you? Savan is month one. And when you do the count of the feasts, the full proper count of the feasts of the Lord, seventh Sabbath, and then the beginning of the 50-day count to Pentecost, the wedding on the se by the seventh day is the time of weddings and the eighth day is the time of his return. You do his 40 days and then you got the three days remaining just like not many days from now <clears throat> of Acts chapter one. And on Acts chapter two, they're anointing. And then what? Just like the ark story, then the 14 years begins. Just like Acts chapter two, after the anointing, the story of the New Testament begins. <clears throat> Do you see how awesome this is? That even on the Lord God's proper count from Taurus as the head of the year, as the beginning of the year, it equals the events of the Hebrew calendar as the Lord said it. He has taken the count of the New Testament 50 days and lined it up <clears throat> with the Old Testament, 50 days. Do you understand? Remember how many times we've shared this? What was, shall be. Right? The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. Was, Old Testament, shall be. Is, 
New Testament shall be. We've explained this many, many times in the typology here in the book. You can download for free from Ministry Revealed, by the way. The links are in the description box. Old Testament typology played out over 2,500 or so years is a typology within the seven churches. Then you have from Christ, death and resurrection. You have the seven churches in their typology over 2,000 years. But in the end of days, you will have the Old Testament and the New Testament played out over 14 years. You're going to have thousands of years of old and new condensed in the most intense time in all of human history over 14 years. <clears throat> what did it say? Old, new, both were, will be. What did this tell us? The old of the fifth and seventh month shall be. The new of the 50 of Pentecost shall be. That there's nothing new under the sun. And I know what you're thinking right now. <laughs> You're thinking, where's this excitement that he's talking about? Well, what's all this excitement with Sirius? Well, well, how did I know? How did Alan know that he knew before he got that confirmation from Trisha? How did Alan know? Guys, I, I, I'm trying to build it up on purpose because it is so awesome. It is so perfect. You're going to know yourselves that we have understood that the Lord has confirmed his 50, 14, 50. And it's not only the was of the fifth and seventh. It is according to the Lord God, the is of his Pentecost count from his true count in the beginning. And if this is to be true, and if Venus is not the bright and morning star, and that Sirius is truly the bright and morning star, okay? If Sirius is truly the bright and morning star, don't you think we should be able to know it? Are you following? Remember this? Let me just give you a real quick recap. I really, you see, I really want you guys, I'm not only trying to drag it out, I, I want you guys to really grasp what I'm about to show you. This very early in the morning is the one from the Brighton Morning Star. And it's the beginning of the 40 days as we've taught it for years. John chapter 8, verse 1. That morning is the same as this morning. And it's the one that relates to the bright and morning star. Both of which are where we've been saying for years, the 40 days of the Son of Man are the typology of those connections at the end of days. Where is the 40 days of the Son of Man begin. Well, now that we know it's not a separate 50, but counting from the Lord's count, we know that this is the 50. Then right here, from the 12th into the 13th, okay? From the 12th into the 13th, on our side of the world, it's going to be 12th. It's going to be early in the morning on the 12th is the eighth day of the beginning of the Son of Man in our 50th that the Lord God confirmed as Pentecost and that was later revealed through Scripture, through detailed study of revealing that it was also the fifth and the seventh month of their attacks. I just showed you that according to the Lord God, this is the beginning of the 50-day count for Pentecost, which would make this 
the beginning of the 40 days, the eighth day of the Son of Man. On our side of the Western world in North America, this right here, see, this is this is the evening, right? From evening to evening. For us, it would be the morning from Israel time, right? Nine hours where I am, nine hours earlier. The 12th into the 13th, my friends. Soak that all in. Understand it. Pause this if you want. Make sure you've grasped it. Because you're about to find out for yourself. I feel the chills coming on again. I feel the tears building up. <laughs> Coffee. There are no more mistakes. You hear that, brothers and sisters? The mistakes are over. I'll say it one more time. The mistakes are over. Because this is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And the 40 days of the Son of Man begin at the bright and morning star. Are you ready? Boom. Did you hear that? Did you see that? Can you read it? Should I make it bigger? August 12th, 2022. Sirius is making its first morning appearance. Let me highlight that again. August 12th, 2022, Sirius, the true bright and morning star, is making its first morning appearance. The bright and morning star that equals the beginning of the 40 days revealed understanding in Luke 24, 1, and in John 8, 1, begins on August 12th, the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. August 12th, 2022, the bright and morning star is making his appearance in the first, uh, in, in making his first morning appearance. Do I need to say anything else? Do I need to say anything else? When I came across this yesterday, when I went and studied and dug into it more, after realizing what I had said and that Venus was incorrect. And I saw Trisha's post, not the word she gave, but the post that she had made, that Charlie had commented on, that I had made the comment for you guys in the last video that there was one more 50-day count. I had prayed to the Lord in, in earnest seeking, in, 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 in a very strong manner, which I'm always worried to do. I don't want to do that to the Lord. I don't want to be, you know, I'm just a piece of clay. You know, it's like this mug beside me says, hey, stop drinking me. Stop drinking from me. Don't pick me up. That's what I feel like when I'm talking to the Lord in that tone. How is this measly piece of clay allowed to talk to the Lord like that? And I don't mean I'm being mean, obviously, but I just feel so humbled knowing that I'm a, just a piece of dirt. That I'm talking to the, the always is forever I am. But every once in a while, this being that second greatest time where it was just so built within me 
I said, Lord, I will not continue to do this. If I have understood this, Lord, please, please let me know that I have understood that it was Taurus that starts your count. And if I have understood, and now you have just shown me that the bright and morning star makes its first appearance as the bright and morning star on day one of the 40 days of the Son of Man, who represents the Son of Man. Lord God, if I'm going to do this video, I need you to let me know. I need you, Lord, to confirm this for me, please. And what did I get? Made sure I saw it. Had 40 was on the screen as the final slide. And above it, in the middle, it said, the mistakes are over. Guys, you realize Trisha had no clue. Trisha had no clue that I had understood what I had understood. I was too busy freaking out, like crying out to the Lord. Nobody knew. And the Lord gave me the confirmation and put it in quotations, just like my first one, to let me know that the mistakes are over and that I had understood that the rising of the bright and morning star on August 12th, and that August 12th is on this side of the world, so it would be in the morning of August 12th, but on the other side of the world, it's the evening to evening, the 12th to the 13th, which is day one of the 40 days of the Son of Man, the bright and morning star. I want you guys to know, with all of my heart, with every piece of revelation that has been given, since day one, I believe with everything that I am, we're here. We found it. It's, it's been given to us. It's been confirmed. All the energy, all the effort, all the diligently seeking the Lord in this revelation that he has given us, for some reason, this mystery that he has laid out for us to find peace by peace, hidden since the creation of the world. He's told us the mistakes are over and the bright and morning star begins at the bright and morning star, the 40 days of the Son of Man. We're here, brothers and sisters. It was simply the 50, 14, 50. It was the sun, Ra, who has gone off course and thrown the whole thing off. I love you guys. I love your families. We'll continue to diligently seek in the Lord. We will continue to diligently share and, and do live shows together until this time comes. We will continue. And now you know if you hear anybody talking about this count, you will know for yourselves that they secretly watch Ministry Revealed if they don't want to acknowledge it. Because brothers and sisters, this is it. It's been revealed and it's been confirmed. These are the 50 of the, f of the 50 of the final days before the 14 years. This is the 40 days beginning of the Son of Man. And this is the start of the 14 years of tribulation, seals, and trumpets. I love you. God bless you. God bless your families. It's intense. I love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.